It is the moment before creation and the sound of the pranava pervades all ten directions. It is the unheard nad, the unstruck sound, the mother of all sounds. Just then Shiva plays on his drum and from it emerge voices and when Shiva dances from the spandana the voices become words and at his feet Ganesha sits and transcribes the movement of his feet into letters and this language is born from the reverberations of Shiva when the heart trembles and the mind is full of feelings it is Krishna who plays the flute for it is the nada of love and it is the venu nada that makes the words come alive as leaves flutter and the peacock dances the aroma of flowers spreads everywhere clouds gather and there is thunder and rain joins the earth with the heaven and vrindavan comes to life with gopis and gopas cows and birds and the sound of the flute spreads madhurya everywhere when voices become silent and footfalls are not heard anymore when unada is still heard in its soft dulcet tones when unada assures us that the sound of the flute will take us to krishna under the kadamba tree where we will rest and find ourselves it is krishna who tells us to venerate him not with rites and rituals but by celebrating his leelas and kridas and what better way than through song and dance which is kavya which is both shravya and drashya if one were to ask why krishna plays the flute or what is the origin of venu gopala one would have to look at two sources the deshi or the autochthonous and the classical or the margi without describing any hierarchy to the two traditions the deshi parampara which includes the tribal the adivasi and the folk traditions have always had a flute playing cowherd who takes the cows out to pasture in a mainly tropical and pastoral civilization such a person was central to its agricultural culture and equally central is the fondness for music in this pastoral population not just indian but many civilizations have a flute playing pastoral hero attaching a romantic ethos to this flute playing cowherd was easy to do because while the cows were grazing the cowherd would sit under a tree or on the river bank and play the flute and this would attract young maidens the flute in the bhagavat does not remain just a musical instrument in the hands of krishna but it is transformed into a divine attribute that touches all of vrindavan this is seminal for early in the bhagavad tradition the concept that krishna relates himself not only to the gopis but to everything that lives and moves around him is stressed this is quintessential and the concept and the power of the flute where the flute is the insignia and the footprint of krishna inspired poets and painters for centuries to come when it comes to understanding and celebrating the krishna of the bhagavad it is the flute that comes to mind it is quite apparent that krishna of the bhagavat was synonymous with the flute krishna's flute is not to be heard and celebrated in solitude or in religious settings but in the midst of the sylvan vrindavan which inhabits parrots and peacocks gopis and gopas cows and the cattle the yamuna and the lotuses dark clouds and nourishing rain The Bhagavad is very clear about the public celebration of Krishna when it describes the ways in which it is done. In the Bhagavad we find this reciting pleasing stories of me and my incarnations and deeds celebrating festivals in my temple with song dance music and discourses. Such says the Bhagavad. Krishna's venu makes us remember what we have forgotten whether it was a tryst with him under the kadamba tree or a smaranam or remembrance of our own true inner selves when he plays the rasa leela 
with us. It has been truly said that for a Krishna Bhakta or Rasika, every sweet sound is but a whisper of his flute.